Shalom, Pastor Har, coming back at back at you with this truth. Give me, uh, forgive me. Anyway, um, I'm going to entitle this uh, lesson: Biblical Maps. Anyway, you see here. Let me open this up. Okay, I have some questions. I'm just going to speak, and then I'm, and I also have questions because it's important to know biblical maps or maps in general, or the world, the globe, whatever you want to call it. And um, where certain things took place. In the past, we're talking about the beginning, the going back to, uh, well, really going back to uh, the creation of this planet, the creation of the universe, and uh, what the Earth looked like before the flood. You had a thing called a uh, Pangea. What does that mean? What does Pangea mean? Anyway, I'm just going by the spirit. You know, I didn't put put any notes together. I'm just going with the spirit, and I wanted to uh, really call this video. Um, Why do we say the the Medes in Isaiah the thirteenth chapter? Why do we say that the Medes are the Russians? You got Russia over here, big vast piece of land, no man's land as they call it at one time, and you have the Medes somewhere. Give me a second. Around here in this area, you got Russia over here. You got them land of the Medes around here. I'm trying to find the Persian Gulf. This looks like the Persian Gulf. You got Iran. You got Turkey. You know, um, Mount Ararat is where the uh, Ark, Noah's Ark landed. But uh, why do you say, or we teach that the Medes are the Russians? Matter of fact, let me let me let me uh, go to that and I'll open the map back up. Isaiah thirteen. Babylon will fall to the Medes. Behold, I, I will stir up the Medes against them. Against who? Babylon. Now, there's no record of the Medes taking down the Babylonians. So we know this not, is not talking about ancient Babylon which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows shall, you know, what goes with a bow? What makes a bow um, effective? An arrow. So when it's talking about a bow, they're going to use their bows, meaning they're going to use arrows to put in those bows to shoot it at the uh, Babylonians. Like I said, the ancient Babylonians that were taken down by the order of Darius, they didn't have armies come in there and have a big war. The, the king of Babylon and his lords, they were drunk. They, they were filled with the king's food, 
which is a lot of carbs. And um, and they were they were drunk, and it was a surgical strike. So they went in there, they killed the king, they killed the lords, and um, which we call the Medo Persian Empire. It started with the Medes. It ended with the Persians being on top, mighty than the Medes. But it was a two. Let's say it's a, a, a twofold kingdom. Let's say. And they basically got rid of the leadership and then they just said, okay, this land right here, Babylon, this is a part of uh, the uh, Medio Persian Empire. It became a, prov a province. So we know that this is not talking about ancient Babylon. It says 17 verse, behold, I, I will stir up the Medes. Now, all of you out there say that the Medes are the Russians. So how can you prove that against them, the Babylonians, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children that didn't, again, that didn't happen to the ancient Babylonians. They didn't kill any children. They, 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 just, they killed by way of surgical strike the king and his lords. It says in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child, these excellencies shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. How is Sodom and Gomorrah taken down by fire from the heavens that was formed by the hands of the Most High? So that didn't happen to uh, it didn't happen to ancient Babylon. You know what I'm going to do? Let me do this. Or should I? Bear me for a minute. I'm going to go to the commentary. Commentary. Bible Hub. Let's see what it says. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Let me go to one of the short ones. And they ain't saying nothing in the commentary. Okay, uh, kill and delete whatever Bible commentary on the Old Testament. With Isaiah thirteen seventeen, the prophecy takes a fresh turn, in which the veil that was um, hitherto obscured. It is completely broken through. We now learn the name of the conquerors. Behold, I, ra I rose up the Medes over them who do not regard silver and take no pleasure in gold. It was a Medes, Darius, Medus equals uh, Syaxes the second who put an end to the Babylonian kingdom in combination with the per Persians. I said that, but that's not talking about that. 
the Persians are mentioned for the first time in the Old Testament by Ezekiel and Daniel. Consequently, Madai, by the side of uh, which Elam is mentioned, blah, blah, blah. Isaiah 21, verse 2 appears to have been a general term applied to the Aryan population of uh, Iran, which are the Persians, from the most important ruling tribe until nearly the end of uh, Hezekiah's reign. The Medes lived, lived scattered about over different boy, districts and in hamlets or villages and tell together. I ain't saying a damn thing, man. Okay, let me jump down here. Okay, I'm down here, the last paragraph. Uh, it is in the sense that Jeremiah speaks of King of Madai, at any rate, this is a much more probable supposition than that. This, in other words, he's saying this makes more sense than anything, than that he refers to monarchs, kings, in a generic sense, but the kings of media, i.e., the rulers of the Several villages are mentioned in Jeremiah 25, verse 25. What does Jeremiah 25, verse 25 say? Let me just do it this way. And all the kings of Zimri and all the kings of Elam, which are which are the East Indians, and all the kings of the Medes, and all the kings of the north, far near, one with another, and all the kings of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the kings of uh, Seshik. Ses shall drink after them. This this doesn't they they all over the place, man. That this hasn't look, this has nothing to do with the ancient kings. I said among those who will have to drink the intoxicating cup, which uh Jehovah, and no Jeho there's no J in the Hebrew, there's no E in the Hebrew is about to give to the nations through Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, so that their expedition against Babylon, that's, that's what it, in Jeremiah, or 50 or 51, it says it's some assembly of nations. That's talking about modern Babylon through Nebuchadnezzar so that their expedition against Babylon is an act of revenge for the disgrace of bondage that has been inflicted upon them. Their disregarding silver and gold is not intended to describe them as a rude, uncultivated people. The prophet simply means that they are impelled by a spirit of revenge and not and do not come for the purpose of gathering booty or silver and gold riches. Revenge drive them on to forgetfulness of all morality and humanity also. Come on, man. Cambridge Bible for schools and colleges, when they 
give you all this information that they, they don't have the answers. Normally they're straight and to the point. Maybe vocab Malone can help us. The Medes, this Iranian people. Now they're telling you that the Medes, the modern day Medes are the people of Iran, which are the Persians. The people first become a leading power in Asia when it is divided with the Chaldeans, the spoils of the Assyrian empire, which came before the Babylonians. But it was not till the rise of the great conqueror uh, Cyrus that it became a uh, formidable em enemy to Babylon. Uh, uh, Cyrus, according to the classical historians, was originally a vassal, and I spoke about the word vassal, that's the middle class. You have lords, vassals, and serfs. Um, and in every society, you have those three classes, lords, vassals, and serfs. serfs. They can give it different names, but there's lords, vassals, and serfs. A vassal king of the Median Empire reigning over the narrow territory to which the name Persia or Persis was at the first, was at the first rest restricted he is called, however, in Babylonian inscription, King of Anzine, which is, this is a lot of crap, bullshit. Let me try to get to the point. Oh, let me go down here. Uh, Cyrus the Mede, the, the Medes were a powerful nation and indeed the only probable human agents of the Chastisement of Babylon and against the second, and against the second, it has to be borne in mind that the name Persia for the United Empire, yep, United Empire, the Medio Persian Empire, made its way slowly into antiquity. In the Bible, it first becomes common in the time of Ezra, Ezra, the scriptures in the Apocrypha. Although long after that, we still read of Medes and Persians. Daniel 5, verse 28, Daniel 6, verse 8, Daniel 6, verse 12, or, or Persians and Medes. Greek writers also speak of the wars of independence against Xerxes. Uh, the verse thereof furnishes a lot of BS which shall not regard silver and gold. They cannot be bought off by a ransom. These people don't understand. They don't understand that it's talking about so-called Russia or Gog and Magog and uh, Babylon the Great. Oh, wait a minute. Matthew Henry's Concise commentary. Uh, I guess it's Revelation 13. I'm sorry. Isaiah 13, 6 to 18. Babylon means. Uh, I'm not going to read all this. But, um, your faces show. Be scorched with, with the flame. All comfort and hope shall fail. Uh, prophets. There shall be a general sense of horror. Those who join themselves to Babylon must expect to share her plagues. Revelate and make a reference to Revelation 18 and 4. Come out of her, my people, that you shall not perceive of her plagues. So this guy kind of hints at it, Matthew Henry's concise commentary. But he doesn't understand what's going on. All that, all that men have, they will give for their lives, but no man's riches shall be the ransom of his life. That is a bunch of nonsense. That shows you that these so-called scholars don't understand. You want to get a scholar? 
go into these prophetic books. Okay, so now going back to Revelation, I mean, I'm sorry, Isaiah 13, verse 17. Babylon will fall to the Medes. What do we teach? Babylon is this place, America, will fall to the Medes, Medes being the Russians, right? Let me read this again, 17 verse, behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows, meaning bows and arrows, also shall dash the young men to pieces. Bows and arrows do not dash young men. Now, if they beat them with the bows, maybe. We know prophetically that bows represent uh, the silos that the ICBMs come at. It. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. I mean, something that Babylon is going to do that's going to get uh, Russia, Gog and Magog, the Medes, so mad that they're just going to shoot. And when they say, look, we'll, we're going to work out a deal where we're going to give you a certain amount of money or well, money, because it says gold and silver. And they're going to say, nah, we ain't with that. We're going to, we're going to blast your, your ass to hell and back. It said in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of a child, these excellencies shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Ancient Babylon was not destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the uh, shepherds make their fold there, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there. So that never happened. So coming back, To the Medes, we teach that the Medes, you know, you're going through these scriptures, and the Medes are represent the Russians, right? So how can you prove that? How can you prove that? That's Russia. That's Russia. The Medes are down here. You got the uh, Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. The Medes will be around here. So why do you teach that all oh, the Russians are the Medes? Why do you teach that? The four bodies of the great waters, which is right here, that's in Revelation. What is that? Revelation 2. You got to understand that. The scriptures say that that um, the Israelites went through the Red Sea. This is the Red Sea. This is the Red Sea right here. I say they didn't go through the Red Sea. I say they went through the Gulf of uh, the Gulf of Aqaba. You have uh, two Gulfs, the Gulf of, I'm sorry, the Gulf of Suez. They went through the Gulf of Suez in the, in the wilderness of Zin, which is in between, which is north of the Red Sea, and in between the Gulf of Suez and the Gulf of Aqaba. So that body of water that the Most High split open, they walked on dry land, was not the actual body of the Red Sea. It was this, 
the, the Gulf of Suez. So now tell me I'm wrong and prove otherwise. Go into the scriptures and show me otherwise. Because you got to know these maps. This down here wasn't even inhabited. So called the land of hand was up here. There's some years that they migrated further south into Africa. Valley of Jehoshaphat would be right here in this area right here. This is where that great war war is going to take place. But who is going to get the uh, the arrows? Mainly this place right here, Babylon, Babylon. It says in X. Uh, chapter one, it speaks of, matter of fact, let me get it. Let me go ahead and get it. X one. Verse 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. What's this talking about, Vocab Malone? What is the uttermost part of the earth? Since we're dealing with maps, Earth is Charles G. One thousand ninety three. Gay, 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 gear, gear. The Earth, the whole Earth, the physical Earth. It said that the disciples will be speaking to the uttermost part of the earth. Strong's G, 2078, S. Hatas. S. Hatas. Extreme, last in time, or in place. So if you're in the Middle East, you come on the other side of the earth. The, End of the earth. Matter of fact, let me do this. Just going into the maps. We were here, Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, unto the uttermost part of the earth. That's all the way over here. That's why this truth came out of America, out of New York, spread throughout America, spread throughout Canada. And you got camps in Europe and Africa. We even had some people put comments from Russia, Shalom, I'm from Russia, Germany. But the main place, the key place is right here. This is, this is why we call this place Babylon the Great. Or the most part of the earth. It says extreme part of the earth. We're over here. How do we get over here? Slave ships, cargo slavery. The other tribes are already here. You had Gad, you had Reuben, Gad. You had Issachar, you had Ephraim, you had Simeon, which a lot of Simeon, Simeonites, Judites, and Benjaminites. Oh, the Tower of Babel, Babel where, where is that? 
Okay, this, you can't hardly see it, but you got a, uh, you can't hardly see the Euphrates, but it's somewhere in here. If I can blow the map up, I can show you which the Euphrates still existed this day. The, tab the Tower of Babel was built right there, right off the coast of the uh, Euphrates. Oh, the Apostle Paul, he made, they tell you that he made three major journeys, but he made five all together. And that was to all these countries right here, which you had Israelites living all, all up, all up and down this part of the, of the earth or this part of the map. And that's why they were called Gentile, because a lot of them didn't know that they were Israelites. And they had to wake up to the fact that they were Israelites. That's what that means, vocab Malone. You had Edomites living right here. And just like the Israelites, they, they spread and scattered. Esau spread and scattered. Uh, Moab. Why do you say Moab is the Chinese and the Japanese? Because it says in Ezekiel 25 that they were going to go to the east. Let me, let me go to that. So in order for you to really understand the scriptures, you have to understand maps. Let's see if I can find that. Ezekiel 25. Ezekiel 25, verse 2, Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. So it's not just the Edomites. And say unto the Ammonites, hear the word of the Lord, the Most High. Let's say it's the Lord, because thou saidest ah, aha against my sanctuary when it was profane, and against the land of Israel when it was desolate, and against the house of Judah when they went into captivity. So you have Moabites come up into our land. Behold, therefore, I will deliver thee to the men of the east for a possession. What's east of Moab? Moab is right around here. What's east of that? There. And they migrated. You have Moab, you have Moab and Ammon migrated up into these parts right here. China. You got India over there. You had Elam. Speaks about the what is it, the 127 provinces of the Medo Persian Empire, which is also known as India. That's in the scriptures. The Persians are Indian, Indians, East Indians. The people of Iran are also East Indians. They don't even speak Arab, they speak, uh, what's that language? I know the people of Afghans, Afghanistan speaks uh, Pashtun, I believe. And then you had Edomites, they went up into the caves of the rocks, the, between the Black Sea, the Caspian Sea, and they moved further up. So you had a, so a lot of these Russian Edomites, and then you got Mongolians, which are nothing but Moab, that mingled among the Russians. That's why you got certain Russians that look kind of like Edomites, but they got slanty eyes. That's that mixture of Moab and uh, Esau. So 
So when you go back to Noah's three sons, every person that's on this planet came from one of three people, a Shem, Ham, or, or Japheth. Even Esau tells you that. Esau tells you in a common, let me, let me go to that. Let me just go to, let me go to uh, Duck, Duck, Go. Let me go to Ham. A Bible. Got to do it this way. Okay, Ham Bible. Ham Bible. Let's see what the, let's see what they say. Ham, son of Noah. Ham, according to the Table of Nations in the Book of Genesis, was the second son of Noah, and the father of Cush, Mizraim, Pud, Canaan. The Cushites are Ethiopians. My one of my cousins had married a Cushite, which they probably Israelites. And um, I remember T spoke speaking to him and telling him that you know you're a Cushite. He said, I already know that. Yeah, I know we're the biblical Cushites. Yeah, we of course that's common knowledge in, in, in Ethiopia, certain parts of Ethiopia, that they know that they go back to the Cushites. They know that they're the, one of the sons of Ham, Mizraim, which are the Egyptians. Egyptians is an Egyptian, I mean, is a Greek uh, label. Uh, Put a Powat and Canaan, the Canaanites. So Esau knows that. They know that the descendants of Ham are so-called Africans. Okay, it says ham descendants are interpreted by Flavius Josephus and others as having populated Africa and adjoining parts of Asia. The Bible refers to Egypt as the land of ham. And it's also in the scriptures. Psalm 78 verse 51. Psalms 105, verses 23. Psalms 106, First Chronicles 4, verse 40. Let's check out the etymology. Etymology. Since the 17th century, a number of suggestions have been made that relate the name Ham to the Hebrew word burnt, black, or hot. And we say Ham or Chum is the word hot to the Egyptian word Him for the servant of the, of the word Him for the majesty of the Egyptian word Kemet, that's what Jake gets this Kemetic stuff. Kemet for Egypt. And Kemet really goes back to the word ham or hum. This is where you get the word chemical or chemical reaction. When there's a chemical reaction, chem meaning hot. It said a 2004 review of David Goldenberg's The Curse of Ham. Race and Slavery in Early Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, 2003, states that uh, Goldenberg uh, argues uh, persuasively that the biblical name Ham bears no relationship at all to the notion of blackness and as of now is unknown of unknown etymology. Okay, yeah. The curse of hand. Let's look, let's deal with the curse of hand. Matter of fact, let me do this. Let's see what the curse of hand is all about. 
occurs in Ham. The curse in Ham occurs in the book of Genesis, imposed by the patriarch Noah. Noah. It occurs in the context of, context of Noah's drunkenness. Yeah, he was drunken. He built a, he set up a, uh, he was a husbandman, meaning he had a, a farm, if you will, and he grew grapes. And then you go through a process of stamping the grapes and then letting it ferment and it, be, and it becomes wine or alcohol as naturally from fermented things. And you drink it and you become intoxicated. So he was so happy that the Most High delivered him. As it occurs in the context of Noah's drunkenness and is provoked by a shameful act showing you that they had the laws. You wouldn't pose a look. The laws were not etched in stone, as they say. Shameful, shameful act uh, perpetuated by Noah's son Ham, who saw the nakedness of his father, and he mocked him. He mocked him. Nakedness of his father, the exact nature of Ham's transgressions, and the reason Noah cursed Canaan. Yo, why didn't he curse Ham? Um, Canaan, when Ham had sinned, had been debated for over 2,000 years. Yeah, the reason is because the, the Canaanites, one of the sons of, of uh, Ham, were going to occupy that land that, is, that was set up for us. So we were justified in killing them off. Because that wasn't their inheritance or their land anyway. The story's original purpose may have been to justify the, sub, the uh, subjugation of the, uh, of the Canaanite people to the Israelites in the form of them taking the land. But in latter, uh, latter centuries, the narrative was interpreted by some Christians, Muslims, and Jews as an explanation of for the black skin. Bullshit. Because what they're saying here is that all of the sons of Noah were so-called white people. That's the narrative that they're pushing. So they're saying that curses, you know, Ham was a white man, a so-called white man. And the curse was your son is going, you're going to have his sons and they're going to be black. Your, 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 one of your sons, Canaan, is going to be black. He's going to be cursed with blackness. As well as justifications for slavery of black people. And this is what, uh, this is what Esau is saying. You know, these Bible thumping, uh, Bible belt type Christians out in the, in the um, Midwest, down South. They said, no, we were justified in putting niggas in slavery because that's the curse. That's the curse that was put on uh, Ham's son, Can uh, Canaan. You guys are Canaanites. We're not Canaanites. We're Israelites. And from the, Noah was a so-called black man. All his sons were so-called black. If anything, one of the sons' line out of that line of Shem came came the so-called white man. This is why you're gonna these so-called Christians, especially these scholars, and these scholars, they they're um. You know, they're, 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 they're grasping for straws, so to speak. They understand certain things and they make things, make certain things up. And then it's part of the lie, too. The whole um, Renaissance period, all right? It says slavery of Black people. Similarly, the Latter-day Saints movement used the curse of hand to, to prevent the ordination of Black men to its priesthood. No, you niggas can't be priests. You can't have any high office in um, the Latter-day Saints organization because you're because you're Canaan. You're a Canaanite. This is what they still teach. That they were cursed with blackness. That's in um, 
the uh, Book of Mormon. Nevertheless, most Christians, Muslim Jews, and, and Mormons now disagree with such inter to show you that they don't know, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, because in the biblical text, Ham himself is not cursed, and race or skin color is never mentioned. Right, is never mentioned. What happened was that they shall be a servant of servant unto his brother, unto mainly unto Shem. And when you go to Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, the Mosai set it up where we were to take them down and take their land. Why? Because they were cursed. A servant of servants shall you be. So they don't they don't know. They don't know what the hell's going on. The Hebrew Israelites and one Westerns are the only group that have the truth. That's why they demonize us. Am I become your enemy because I give you the truth? So in order to understand the scriptures, you have to understand the maps. You have to understand the word Pangea. Pangea meaning, it means uh, all loosely translated, all earth, all world, meaning the whole earth was one gigantic piece of land. You see how this looks like pieces of a puzzle? It was all one land that broke it up. What broke it up? The great deluge, the great flood. In which scholars or uh, historians, I'll say, and archaeologists got together, mainly in the 50s, and they went to uh, they knew that that the ark landed on Turkey, Mount Ararat in Turkey. And they went with their scientists to to get the evidence. What Esau does. He goes into the scriptures, but he verifies by his archaeologists and the scientists and his historians and so forth. And they found that there is a big so-called ship that is described in the Bible as an ark. It looks like the ark that's described in, in uh, during the time of Noah. And this, this right here is a faith builder because you see in the Bible come to life with these, with these areas right here. Okay, you got the Red Sea, you got the Nile, you got the Ezekiel, which is the Tigris, and you got the Euphrates. That's also in the scriptures. Then you got the Jordan. Let's go to that real quick. I'm gonna close. Genesis. Where is that? Genesis 2. But I open up with, why do we, why do you say that the Medes are the Russians? Oh, by the way, Genesis 1, the name of the Mosai is not written. Or oh, you want to mess up a, a, a Christian? Go to Genesis 1 and 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Ask them, who was God? They're going to say, it's God, the supreme, the heavenly father. And God, Yahweh, is not even mentioned here. The first time he's mentioned is in... Um, what is it? Okay, Genesis 2, verse 5, and every plant of the field before it. Is it mentioned here before that? Sorry about that. Okay, I guess it's the fifth verse. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God, Lord God, now when you 
go to the Hebrew. And you have to understand some Hebrew and some Greek. There's a term called loss in translation. Okay, it says the Lord God, right? The Lord, all caps, is what? Yahweh. They say Jehovah. There's no J or P in, in Hebrew. It says the existing one. Loosely translated, yes, it means the existing one. It means uh, a higher means to be. So the Yah, the smallest character in so-called Hebrew, means he. He to be. He exists. It also translates into the word breath. Hawa, Haya, let, let, me, let me deal with Haya. To be, right, to be, exist, happen. Hawa, H 1933. To be, become, exist, happen. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go any deeper into that. The only ones that call themselves, the only people that refer to themselves are Christians that somewhat understand the Bible are these uh, scholars. These uh, got people that uh, spent a number of years in these seminary, theological cemeteries. Where was I going? I wanted to go into something. I think, the, oh, that, this is what I wanted to do. Genesis 2, verse 4. These are the generations of the heaven, heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. The Lord God or Yahweh Allah put out the order for his beloved son and, and a certain amount of angels in, in, in Genesis 1 to create everything. That's why John received that in John 1 and 1. What does it say in John 1 and 1? John 1 and 1 goes hand in hand with, with uh, a Genesis 1 and 1. John 1. In the beginning was the word. Who's the word? Yahweh Shai, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. And the word was, was God. It should be was a God. And the word, and the word was God. God just means uh, power. Michael the archangel is considered a God. We the Israelites are considered gods. When the Mosai sets us up in our kingdom, when that change comes pursuant to uh, 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, and so we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, meaning we're going to become gods. Powers, supermen, superwomen. And we're going to have super babies. The Kalel effect. 
Kalal is the, the crypt, kryptonite name, <laughs> krypton name of Superman, Clark Kent. Okay, the same was in the beginning with God. So God means the angels. It also means the son of the Lord. All things were, were made by him who, the son of the Lord, he was a foreman, and the angels were the workers. And without him was not anything made that was made. And it was life, and life was the light of men. What men? Israelite men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. It, it, the darkness can't over, overcome light. You can take a place that's pitch black dark. If you if you pull out a, a flashlight, it's going to push all that darkness out of the way. So when we go on the highways and the byways, we represent those lights, those candles. That's why they, you know, occupy with us because we got the truth, but they don't want to accept the truth. They don't want to accept this truth. Esau doesn't want to accept, who wants to accept the fact that they're going, to, who's going to say they want to be a slave? I mean, nobody want to be no slave. But they are going to slavery. You can't get around that. There's, there's many scriptures on that. He that leads in the captivity is choked, going to captivity. He that killed up with the sword must be killed with the sword. Payback is a bitch. Okay, so now let's go back to Genesis 2. Oh, you got these clown ass Christians thinking that the uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil is an actual tree. Okay, this is what I want. Gen uh, Genesis 2 verse 10. And the river went out of Eden. Now, what does the word Eden mean? Ask a, qu a Christian, what does the word Eden mean? They won't know. It means paradise. The whole earth was set up to be a paradise. The Most High created the earth. Then he placed man on the earth. And he, he the earth is, is made so that man can live on the earth. You know, you have trees that push out oxygen. And a river went out of Eden to water the, the garden. Now there's a garden eastward in Eden, in paradise or joy. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Of four bodies of water. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which which compasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. So let's find out where Havilah is. As a, a Christian, where's Havilah? They don't know. Let's see where Havilah is. And I'm going to show you where Havilah is on the map. A part of Eden, Eden uh, through which flowed the river Pison was probably the Grecian coke chicks in the northern corner of Asia Minor. What? near the Caspian Sea. Are you crazy? A district of Arabia of the Ishmaelites. So there are such a people called Ishmaelites. So the descendants of the Ishmaelites are here. Named for the second son of, wait a minute, wait a minute. A district in Arabia of the Ishmaelites named from the second son of Cush, probably the district of Kulan in the north western part of Yemen. Well, I'm going to show you on the map. 
uh, Python. That's Python. Uh, uh, which is the Red Sea. What's this called? Habila. When you go to your biblical maps, you got to, matter of fact, let me, let me, let me prove that. Let me prove that. Let me see if I can prove that. Let me just put in Bible or biblical map. Bible map. Or you can put in biblical map. Bible map. Okay, where are we? This, okay, wait a minute. I can't, let me do another one. Havila would be down here. Okay, Genesis 2, verse 10, and the river went out of Eden to water it, garden, and from thence it was parted and became in the four heads, four bodies of water. The name of the first is uh, Pison. That is, let me, let me look up the word Pison. Let me see what it says about Pison. Let's see what they say about Python. Python, which they say it means increase, one of the four rivers used to describe the location of the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden is uh, Jerusalem. Which that's the Red Sea. Verse 11, Genesis 2, verse 11, the name of the first is Pison. That would, that's which, which can pass the whole land of Habila, which is Arabia, which is east of the Red Sea, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is bedlam and onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. So what would that be? It would be the Red, the um, Nile River. It, it compasses the whole land. Let's see what they say. Gihon. They say it means bursting forth one of the four rivers of, of the Garden of Eden, a spring near Jerusalem with the anointing and proclaiming of the, of the uh, Solomon as king took place. That's bullshit because it said that it compassed the whole land of what? Let's come back. The whole land of Ethiopia. Solomon was in Jerusalem. And the name of the third river is Hedekiel. That is it which compasses to, uh, which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. So let's deal with Hedekiel. Hedekiel. Now they said Pison is up there around uh, um, 
what they say. It was up there further north. Okay, they got this one right. Hidikyo, which they say it means rapid. One of the rivers of Eden, which which uh, 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 course east toward Assyria, better known as the Tigris, the Septuagint equivalent, the Tigris. So let's see what the Tigris is. Tigris River. Let me get an image here. That's the Tigris River. That's the Tigris. That's the Tigris. That's the Euphrates. Going, they ain't showing you, but uh, it shows you the Red Sea and the, and the Nile. And then the middle of, the, of the, all that you have uh, in our land, the Jordan. So these rivers come past the Jordan. They're not showing you a full picture of the map. So they said that the, 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 the Tigris, that's the Hidikyo. They're telling you that it's the Tigris. And then you got the Euphrates. You got the Euphrates, which is called the Euphrates to this day. So you got the four rivers. You got the Red Sea, which is the Pison. You got the Nile, which is the Gihon. It said the, the Pisan, Pisan compasses the land of Habila. This is Habila, Arabia. Then you got the uh, Euphrates, and then you got the Tigris. And then you got the Jordan right up around here. So, you know, when the scriptures speak about these various uh, geographical places on the earth, it's all in it's all in the scriptures. So Esau knows Esau knows that the Mosai created the planet this planet. Esau knows that there was an ark, a Noah's ark up in Turkey because the scriptures say it landed in Mount Ararat, which is Turkey. And he said, let's take scientists and Bible historians and archeologists, and let's see if we can get evidence. So they got the evidence. They know that this earth at one time was a Pangea. Pan meaning all and Gia meaning land. Because you can see it right there. What broke it up? What broke it up? You can see how Africa fits almost perfectly to South America. It all got broken up. By what? By that world flood, the deluge. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom. I was just going in a different direction. You know, you got and you have to know maps to, to further understand the scriptures. Because they mention these geographical areas in the scriptures. And like I said, these Christians, you want to mess a Christian up. You go into the maps, you go into the places, you go into Adam, you go into Eve, the tree, the garden. A garden eastward in Eden. You ask them where Eden is, they're going to say it's the garden. No, God, Eden is a whole planet. All right.
Solomon having a great navy led by Hiram or Hiram of Bith, which the whole, uh, what is that, the organization? The Masons are based off of uh, the widow's son, which is Hiram of Bith, which he was a Canaanite, a black man. Ain't gonna tell you that. How him and the Canaanites, they were the great, the great seagoers of that time, not Esau. It was the Canaanites that uh, came from the land of Edom because they had them ships down there where Edom was. And they went back and forth to the Americas because this was part of a paradise too. They got peacocks, eight different spices, gold, Ophir. Ophir, Ophir is all over here. Brazil. Barazal, which means iron in Hebrew. When uh, Columbus came over to the New World, what was this guy, the main uh, translator? Well, I believe it was five translators, a company of translators, and they spoke fluent Hebrew. They spoke Arabic, uh, Latin, Spanish, Hebrew, Arabic. I mentioned Arabic. And when they communicated with these people, they were talking to them in what you would call Hebrew. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.